Well, hey guys, been asked if I can do a quick overview of the Triumph TR6 Lucas Mark II fuel injection systems by our cousins over the pond in Canada and America. So I'm going to show this fuel system right from the beginning, right from the fuel tank all the way up to the injectors, because with a Lucas Mark II fuel system in a Triumph TR6, there is actually quite a bit going on in the boot, as we'll find out. Right then, starting off inside the boot, we've got the petrol tank, which let's face it, everyone's familiar with the petrol tank. But on American and Canadian cars, you would normally just have your fuel pipe coming from here and going straight to your fuel filter, straight to your fuel pump and to the carburetors. Not so on petrol injection, completely different animal. So what we've got going on down here is I've got a popular conversion in my car of a Bosch fuel pump conversion. So we've got the fuel pipe coming down from fuel tank, going to a pre-filter. This is just gravity fed. Then it's going into the high pressure fuel pump. This is a Bosch fuel pump, which will then raise the pressure up to around about 105 PSI. This will go into a post filter. So it's pressurized through this post filter, comes along this pipe, round there, and goes across, if I just bring the torch in down here, to the T-piece here. On the back of the T-piece, you've got the pressure relief valve, so that will regulate the pressure. And if the pressure is too high, it'll return some fuel back to the fuel tank along this pipe along here. And that's just a vent going down there. And whatever is rightly regulated, it'll carry on the fuel along this pipe down here, all the way down there, underneath the car, along the chassis, to the metering unit. Now then, curiosity kills the cat. What originally did a TR6 have in its boot? Because mine's been converted to have a Bosch fuel pump for reliability reasons. So originally, your fuel filter would have been one of these type, which is just basically a diesel fuel filter that's fitted in the boot, and I'll show you where in a minute. And the original fuel pump looked like this. Now if this back side of it, the motor, looks familiar, it's probably because it is, it's based on a wiper motor. Now I've heard of stories of these um, where people driving around with frozen peas in the boot to keep these cool because they overheat. Triumph and Lucas did come up with a design to wrap the fuel around the fuel pump to keep them cool but they're not particularly brilliant that's why I've got a Bosch fuel pump in mine and not the original Lucas I've toyed with refitting the Lucas one back in but they're not terribly reliable some people will say they're great but you know it's luck of the draw whether you get a good one or not the Bosch fuel pumps are just far superior in my opinion so originally they would have been fitted In the boot, you would have had the fuel pump, which would be up there, like that. And this pipe would go after the pressure relief valve. This pipe here, coming to the pump, would have come from the original fuel filter. And the fuel filter would have been bolted up there where I've got my fuel pump. So, yeah, nice and easy. Now some people will actually tell you you're better off bolting the fuel pump to the outside of the car because it does keep them cooler. That is true, I'm not going to deny that, it does keep them cooler. But I don't live in a hot climate country, I live in a quite cold climate country in the United Kingdom so I'm quite happy with mine being in the boot, it's been in there 10 years and never caused me any grief. Um, but in hotter climate countries such as Spain and France yeah, it probably is a good idea to fit it outside. As I say, I'm happy with mine, but where it is. Um, so yeah, that's everything that's going on in the boot. Let's move on to the engine bay. Now then, the metering unit. This is what everybody goes on about when they talk about Lucas Mark II fuel injection systems on Triumph TR6's metering units. They are basically just a distributor for the fuel. That's all they are. They just distribute fuel from one to six cylinders and any leftover fuel they send back to the fuel tank. It is literally that simple. 
let's get one out and have a look, see how it works. So, there we are, the metering unit. Quite simple when you think about it. It's just a distributor for fuel, that's all it is. So if you know how a distributor works, you can pretty much work out how one of these work. A very simple technology. So, doesn't matter what metering unit it is, throughout production, Triumph used the exact same metering unit, whether it was a CP car, which is a 150 brake horsepower from 1969 all the way to 1972, or a CR car, which is a 125 brake horsepower car from 1973 to end of production. They all used the same metering unit. The only difference is in the calibration of the metering unit. That's what will change it. So, how do they work? Well, nice and simple. You have fuel coming up here, into this pipe here, at 105 PSI. Adjusted accordingly, depending on your car. So, say if you've had your car tuned or bored out, stuff like that, it might vary a little bit. But in general, 105 PSI coming up here. And then it'll leave these ports, six ports here, to the individual cylinders. I can't tell you off the top of my head which one's which. I'll have to quickly look at the manual. So you've got this port here will go to cylinder one, this port here to cylinder six, this port here will go to cylinder two, this one to cylinder five, this one here to cylinder three, and this one here to cylinder four. Nice and simple. So any excess fuel will come out of this pipe here and return to the tank. Obviously this one here has come from the T piece where the pressure release valve is at 105 PSI. So at idle, only this bit here is being used. When you put your foot on the throttle, or if you're requiring the choke, then you'll be requiring this bit here to work, and that will change all of the gummings on what's happening on here. I've taken one to bits for you so you can see what's going on. So, naturally, that's the front end there, which I was just talking about. And this is the back end here of the metering unit. Now when you put your foot on the throttle, you draw in a vacuum, and that's how these work, off a vacuum. So you put your foot on the throttle, a vacuum is drawn down this pipe here. Inside here is a diaphragm which lifts up. These little levers push against here. A little plunger here pushes forward because of the datum track, so it pushes it forward a little bit. And then that adjusts the fuel mixture in here, which enriches it and gives you more fuel at the cylinders. The same thing happens with the choke. The choke is here and is pulled on or off accordingly. These can be adjusted by the DIY mechanic by just adjusting this here and making sure the field gauge is right in here. Can't remember off the top of my head where the adjustment is, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, but yeah, you, you can adjust that there yourself and you can adjust those to the right feeler gauge gap. The rest of it, I don't generally tend to touch because there's guys out there like Malcolm at Prestige Injection who have got all the right equipment to adjust these and make them 100% right. If I was to buy the right equipment for these, it would cost me thousands, so it's just not worth me buying. So, how do you time these up is what I've been asked. It's relatively straightforward to actually time up a metering unit to an engine because they're marked. What you've got at the end of the rotor here, as I said at the start, you know, the rotor's turning around and, and sending fuel to the relevant cylinder. You've got a scribe mark just at the bottom there. And that lines up with that scribe mark there. Nice and straightforward, you see. So you line that up with that. You have cylinder number one at top dead center, and you have cylinder number six with the valves on the rock. And then it's just put on the pedestal, and away you go. It's not quite that straightforward because I generally tend to do these with the cylinder head off and a DTI gauge on cylinder number one, and then adjust the pedestal accordingly until the metering unit fits bang on and you know it's top dead center because if you don't do that 
what could happen is you could think it's up top dead center and it's slightly off or it's slightly off the other way the other thing to do when timing these up is to take off number six port and to make sure that you are getting the right hole which can be seen in the manual if I just show you so number six port is out here and what you want to be looking for is the port to be open like half moon there half moon there half moon there if it's open in that way in that sort of half moon you know on the way of closing it, it's not right it's, it's meant to be there so yeah that's the metering unit summed up there are things to go wrong with them they are mechanical technology mechanical technology does go wrong because it's prone to wear and tear but I hope that sort of answers questions about the metering unit. Right then, last in the chain are the injectors. Now these do go wrong with the Lucas Mark II fuel system. They do dribble, they don't shut right, they just do go wrong. They generally tend to go wrong because people don't use their cars as often as what they should do. The Lucas Mark II fuel injection system likes to be under pressure to work right. When it's left for a period of time over the winter, that's generally when you tend to get the problems happening because of lack of use, and that's when you tend to get the misfires. So I say these go wrong. It's not just these going wrong. Sometimes you can think you've got a misfire, but you haven't got the misfire from the injector. What happens is also the banjo bolts on the metering unit go wrong because there's a flap valve inside them and sometimes you can work them backwards and forwards and get them to work again by taking the metering unit off and getting them to work and then just bleeding the car sometimes you can't and it's exactly the same with the injectors sometimes you can tap them on the side of the engine and get them to work or just slightly lift them off their seat a couple of times to get them to work I'm not going to say that's the answer to your car's problems because I don't know, I'm not looking at your car. Um, but this is just from my mechanical experience of working on these injectors. Going down to the inlet manifold, there's two types of inlet manifold for the Triumph TR6. There's the single balance pipe style, which is on the 150 brake horsepower TR6, which is what mine's got and your tap on the end here is what is adjusted to give you your designated idle speed so it's nice and easy you just turn it in to close off your idle down to your desired speed you pull it out if you want the engine to go faster nice and easy the vacuum pipe here is what goes to the metering unit just there that I was talking about earlier and then you've got a vacuum pipe here to go off to the servo, the brake servo. This has got to be a good sealed system. Problems with the Triumph TR6 do come down to bad seals. If these aren't sealed right, it'll never run right. It is good advice to actually put Jubilee clips around these. I know I've been a bit of a naughty boy and not bothered putting Jubilee clips around, but I think they're mine are pretty well sealed. There's a lot of originality. And they never were sealed from original. So how these are adjusted throttle linkages, well this is only the way I do them, it's not to say it's the way that everybody should do them, but on the 150 I tend to use this vacuum gauge which you can buy for carbureted cars and I adjust it on number 6, number 4 and number 2 because that's nearest to the linkage. I don't go for all six because there's no point they'll all be different anyway you know you, they tend to be slightly different through the butterflies you can play around with them to try and get them the same but i tended to find they generally tend to don't, don't to be that far out so the one two five the cr cars have got a double balance pipe and they've got a different throttle linkage again which i tend to find you adjust them from the first throttle body to the second one to the third one to the first one to the second one to the third one 
the way you adjust CPs, which are 150s, are you do the internal ones first and then you balance the external one to the internal and that way it sort of sets it up right and just as John Twist always says on MGs between every adjustment you do rev it up and blow it out don't just leave it idling always rev it up and blow it out because it will never run right otherwise you got to take the fuel out of the engine to make the cars run right so the choke on these isn't just at the metering unit it's obviously cable operated down by the metering unit as I showed you earlier on that metering unit it comes up a cable here there's another cable which goes down here to the butterflies and just allows the butterflies to open a little bit more and that just obviously helps with the choke so I hope that's answered all your questions about the petrol injection system on Triumph TR6 there's not a lot to do at the moment because of obviously what's going on in the world at the moment. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.